New Forge Part 2 Back with a vengeance. Ooh, looky what's arrived. Steel. So this is a 500mm by 500mm, 6mm wide piece of uh, plate steel. Very heavy. And that is what I'm going to be using for the rear plate as well as the front plate. I'm figuring about 25 centimeters coming out and then hopefully I've got to try and measure out a way of having it fit to the bottom of this forge here. Not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. So using a piece of cardboard that the box actually came in, um, we've managed to come up with this template which now seems to fit pretty well. It's not a bit bendy but you get the idea. I'll use that to uh, measure out on the, uh, the piece of steel and then from there I can work out the other measurements I need and I can cut it to shape. There we go. Obviously down the middle and then I've worked out roughly the shape. So I'm going to cut this one out first and chop it off and then if this fits I can just literally flip it over and use the same thing as a template on this side. So yep, let's get to cutting. There we are, that took a fair bit of jiggery pokery, had to keep um, marking points that needed shaving back. There is a little bit of a slight gap going through here, like there's quite a big one there, but I'm hoping I'll be able to fill that in with welds, but it's, um, it's quite well fitting now. So next thing to do, I'll take this off, mark the other one, and then weld this on, and hopefully it'll fit properly. Okay, we've got this thing balanced to where we need it smack in the middle. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it on a very slight downward gradient. See there? Very slight. The idea being, because this thing's going to be left outside, when it rains, I don't want any excess water running up this into the forge. I'd rather it run away. So the position it's in now is the position it's going to be welded in. So I'm going to get straight on that now. Right, that's got it tacked. Now I need to go around the edges, so I'm going to move this in order to do that. Now we are all welded up, uh, as you can see, still nice and level. I've also just gone around the edges and the corners and just buzzed them to make them smooth so that I don't catch myself on them or cut myself on them. But uh, yeah, there we go, one side done, now I've just got to do the other. <coughs> so there's the second one measured out. Um, as you can see, it's still a bit of a sort of upward gradient at the moment, so all I'm doing is I'm marking with a pen just the areas here, like there, that need shaving back slightly so that this can kind of relax back into a uh, down gradient position. So I need to shave back around there, and then probably same, yeah, same on the other side, just along here. So we'll take that back out, and we shall grind it back until we can get it fitting BEA beautifully. Well, that was much easier than the last side. Same again, got a slight uphill gradient going on to uh, help prevent with drainage and hopefully as you can see we are slightly lopsided but certainly good enough um, I've been struggling to getting it flatter and that might be the best I'm gonna get so we'll make do with that it'll be fine there we are all welded up and uh, like before buzzed around the sides so there's no sharp edges sharp corners um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bar between the two points here and here, just a bit of like rebar, and I'll use that as a place to uh, hang my tongs. So here she is flipped over, the belly of the beast. I was initially planning on maybe welding along these sides, but to be honest with you, these temper colours mean that a decent amount of heat soaked through, so I'm thinking that this is going to be a pretty strong weld. So, to be honest with you, bearing in mind these aren't really going to be bearing that much weight, I don't think there's any need, so I think I'm just going to leave it as is. But like I say, next step, bar, from here to here, to hang my tongs. There we go, we've now cut this piece of um, ooh, cold rolled steel to length. Yeah. This is difficult one-handed. So that will be mounted here. Just gotta get to welding again. There we go, messy welds, but it is on and it is connected and it ain't going anywhere. So, I have a small confession to make. Here's the thing. I'm part Irish. 
So when I say I need a place to hang my tongs, you'd better believe it means I need a place to hang my tongs. <laughs> oh, I'm hilarious. So unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the burner to arrive. Um, I don't know when it's due, so this is kind of as far as I can get for the time being. Um, but as you can probably see, it's just started raining. And uh, it doesn't look like it's uh, going to clear up anytime soon. So I'm just going to duct tape up again all of the joints so that no rain can run around in and make it rust before I get to sort it out. Jesus. Looks like I got my timing right. Also, I, uh, I should own up. I apologise if my Irish accent wasn't exactly uh, up to scratch. I'm actually Northern Irish. But unfortunately, the same joke doesn't work with a bally money accent. Well, I got halfway through a 500 grit sanding of this plate, getting ready for me to etch it. But unfortunately, as you can see, it started raining again. So I have to put that on hold for the moment. So despite the rain, I decided just to battle on through, and I've now got this up to a nice 500 grit. Nice and shiny. Um, I might take it up to an 8, just to help prevent with any rust in the future. In fact, yeah, you know what, let's take it up to an 800, why not? It'll look pretty. There we go, 800 grit finish. It's not perfect, there's still a couple of um, vertical stripes, but... It is more than enough for the purpose, to be honest with you. I probably went a bit above and beyond with it. Next is to try and mark out my uh, my logo on here somehow. And so begins the really slow process of trying to cut out my template. I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. Well there we go, there's the first part of the um, logo done. I'll do the uh, PJT touch mark over here after I've done this part because I'm very worried about how fragile this is. So if I can get this etched sooner rather than later, I think that'll come out pretty cool. Right, if you didn't see my video on electrochemical etching, um, I made my own machine. Um, and basically what you do is you send a current through salty water uh, and then through a sort of a pad of some sort, in this case felt, and it eats into the metal and creates an etch. Hopefully, like you will be about to see. There you go, starting to eat away already. I'm going to have to give this quite a few layers, I think, because I'm going to need this to be quite deep um, in order to still show up once it's covered. Right, I'm now done with the etching and I'm just finishing off the uh, the marking. And uh, we will see how this comes out in about five, four, three, two, and one. And one for luck. Okay, that should do. Let's take a look. I really hope this has worked. <laughs> Try and get it all in one go. Well, not gonna lie, that looks pretty freaking cool. Let's get it. Let me uh, give it a tidy up, and then I'll show it to you properly. There we go. There's the first part done. Now to work on the actual touch mark section. Beautiful. There it is with the logo all completely done. Um, I think this is where I'm going to end this video for the day. So we'll move on to part three when the burner arrives. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that looks freaking cool. That came out really well. Very pleased with that. Alright guys, um, I'll see you when I see you. Catch you on the next one.